Hello. Today I would like to tell you my story of how I became a dancing scientist and that it is okay to not fit the mold. Just like dance and science, we usually don't put together side-by-side -side qualities such as flexibility and perseverance, which help us through life and this is what we will talk about today. I was born in Ukraine and when I was two years old, my mother would bring me with her to her dance studio and by the time I was three years old, I was performing on stage. Growing up was just as many young girls, I aspired to become a ballerina. Ballet is extremely competitive. Only one can be a prima ballerina, and there are hundreds of girls working really, really hard to get there. I was determined to become a ballerina of my dreams, dancing four hours a day, every day, six, seven times a week. I kept practicing pointing my feet, stretching, practicing my movements over and over again. And the hard work was starting to pay off. I started to win competitions, receive first places. I even got to perform on main stage of the country of the Ukraine, and it felt absolutely amazing. When I turned 15 years old, I had to move to the United States with my parents, and I was very upset to leave everything behind, just as any teenager would at that age. Coming here brought many challenges. I didn't know the language, the culture, and I even ballet technique here was different. But I was persistent with my dream. When I got to Charlotte Ballet, I had to adapt to the situation, and I got to learn the new technique from world experts such as Patricia McBride, as well as I had to learn English. In the spring, I was casted as a lead in the contemporary ballet of Mark Diamond. And I was on top of the world, performing in front of the audience and hearing the applause, receiving the flowers, and I felt like a true ballerina. And just as I got the taste of what it feels like to be a ballerina, the next day I tore a ligament in my knee and I was told that I will never dance again. I was devastated. After my reconstruction surgery, I had a lot of time to think. Trust me. I decided to go to Central Pimo Community College and major in dance, and my naive 16-year-old self, barely speaking English, still barely walking, went around the area knocking on doors to see if they needed a new dance teacher. And that is how I got my first full-time position as a dance educator, and a new journey had began for me. You would think that now my life was all rainbows and glitter, but that's not the reality. As I was studying community college and taught dance, I came across multiple hurdles while preparing myself for the four-year university and trying to transfer and pursue my ed further education. During that time, I discovered my love for chemistry, and how could you not fall in love with the magic that happens in front of you, and you're even able to make it? Due to various circumstances, I continued to study chemistry at UNC Charlotte and continued to teach dance in the community. This was the time for me to learn what science really was. I was able to conduct novel research in Dr. Rabinovich's lab in the day, and then in the evening, I would be a ballerina teaching dance and performing. You would ask, was it simple to do? No. But did I love doing it? Heck yes. After my undergraduate degree, I joined Nanoscale Science PhD program here at UNC Charlotte in the laboratory of Tom Schmedeke. Start of graduate school was a bumpy road with lots of important and scary decisions. But it was also a great time during which I was able to establish collaborative science outreach program and focus on the science full time. It was the time for me to take down the crown and put on my lab goggles. Then something that no one could predict happened. My father was diagnosed with rare type of brain cancer. That was not only heartbreaking news, but also a very challenging experience to see someone you love become less of themselves every day, lose their identity, because tumors started to occupy too much space in the brain. It was a very tough year, which ended in death of my father. That year, I was splitting myself between working on my PhD, taking care of my parents, hospital visits, lawyers, and trying to survive. What helped me to remain on track after everything was start to perform with Gaston Dance Theater and continue my scientific career. This is when my self-discovery started.
when I had to take all of my experiences and turn them into something new. This time was for me to learn and realize that flexibility and perseverance are guiding me through life. I was no longer able to be just a scientist full time. And what I did instead, I had a chance to dive deeper into my creativity in dance world by performing new characters, as well as I became a chair of Younger Chemist Committee at American Chemical Society, which allowed me to help young scientists to learn more about their dream careers. I also came across an opportunity of customer discovery program at VenturePrize at UNC Charlotte, which allowed me to talk to world-known scientists, businessmen, and it inspired me to dream big, innovate, and make impact, and it led me to my own tech startup. In my world, dance and science were no longer foreign to each other. And let me explain to you why. Let's look at some of the necessary qualities for both a ballerina and a scientist. Leadership. I have to lead research projects, coordinate with teammates and mentors. In ballet world, I have to direct and coordinate cast members. Team player. No scientist works alone, only in movies. It takes a team of scientists with diverse backgrounds to make new breakthroughs. Also, a show with just one person is not very fun. Every ballet performance takes a village of people to bring a show to life. Adaptivity and ability to work under pressure. This is my favorite one. I'm sure you can imagine those crazy mad scientists when things go wrong and the world apocalypse is happening. Although usually things are not that bad, but accidents do happen and we have to react very quickly because your life or someone else's life may depend on it. As a ballerina, you have to continue to perform no matter what happens. I have myself fallen on stage and had to pretend like it was meant to be. I've lost my costume on stage, had music cut off at the wrong time, lights turned on or off at the wrong time, and you still have to react very quickly to make sure that you still bring joy to the audience. There are so many more examples. There's cre creativity, patience, communication, ability to learn, and many other qualities that are common in both dancers and scientists. As of today, there is not a career for a dancing scientist, and I had to carve out my own path, and that's okay. You don't have to fit the mold. For some people, standard careers work great, for others not so much, and we have to create a new way, and there is nothing wrong with that. I hope today through some of the examples of my life experiences I was able to demonstrate that there is no smooth path in life and you know that it is the best thing that can happen to you because if not these challenges and failures, I would never be the person I am today, a ballerina, a scientist, an entrepreneur. We can't control what would happen to us tomorrow, but we can do our best today to prepare ourselves for tomorrow. I would like to thank my parents to, that have been supporting all my crazy ideas that have taught me so much and were always ready to help. I would also like to thank my teachers throughout my life because if not them, I would not have had the interest to pursue careers I chose. Finally, a lesson you should take away from today's talk is to thrive for your dreams, be open to new opportunities, and be the person you want to be. You don't have to walk in someone else's shoes live through your story, and do great things. This is it for today. This is my story, a story of a dancing scientist. Thank you.